Cornwall Public Library presents Understanding Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is a big part of most of our lives these days, but many of us don't quite understand what it is. That's what I'm here to explain right now. Wi-Fi is an abbreviation, sort of, for wireless internet. Obviously, the Y part makes sense. It stands for wireless. But what about the Phi part? What does that stand for? Well, it really doesn't stand for anything. It was just put there to make it rhyme with hi-fi, which is an old audio term. Now, before I explain about Wi-Fi, or wireless internet, I need to take a little time to explain how things used to be. Before there was wireless internet, there was wired internet. That meant that a big cable came into your house and was connected to something called a router. That router had ports that you could connect to your computers using what was called an ethernet cable. In order to be on the internet, you had to be connected to the router with the ethernet cable. This not only meant that you were pretty much stuck in one place, but that no one else could use the internet service you were paying for unless they also had a cable connected to your router. Wi-Fi is different. First of all, it's wireless, which means, well, it's radio. Yes, radio, which means it's like those stations you can pick up for miles, each of which has their own name or set of call letters, except that this has such low power that you can only pick it up for about 300 feet. But it's not totally wireless. You still have a cable coming into your house that connects to your router. But the router is now a low power radio station capable of broadcasting and receiving within up to a 300 foot radius. That up to part is important because sometimes thick walls or steel framing can seriously cut down how far the signal can travel. And just like those stations you can pick up for miles, every Wi-Fi router has its own network name, which is something you didn't have to worry about before. It used to be that back in the early days, when Wi-Fi first came out, most networks were open. This meant that anyone could use anyone else's Wi-Fi within 300 feet for free, even if they weren't paying for internet service themselves. But eventually, for security reasons, people started locking down their networks so that only certain people could use their Wi-Fi. This also meant that the freebies were gone. Sometimes, the network is secured with a password, and anyone with a password can get on with no problem, sometimes even automatically. The network at your friends' and relatives' houses are probably like that. And if you have Wi-Fi at your house or apartment, whoever set it up for you set it up with its own particular name and password. You need that to get yourself on for the first time and let other people use it too. Sometimes the network is open, but you have to go through what's called a splash screen first to verify that you understand and accept the rules of that network. The network here at the library is like that. You'll see the same thing at McDonald's, Burger King, and other places with public Wi-Fi. While passworded networks might let you on again automatically every time you're in their range, open networks with splash screens will make you go through the verification process every time you get on them. Sometimes, in your wireless settings on your mobile device, you'll see a list of all the Wi-Fi networks you've been on. This doesn't mean that you can get on any of them right now. After all, you might be too far away from them. It's just a list of the ones you've used most recently or most frequently so that your device can get on them faster. So please, don't think that you can still get on our wireless network when you're away at the beach just because you see it on your list. Our signal doesn't even reach as far as the lake. There's so much more I could explain about Wi-Fi, but I think that this is enough for now. I hope this has made Wi-Fi and how it works just a little clearer for you.